The film commences in the year 1974, in the heart of Northern Ireland. A sense of mystery pervades the air as two unsuspecting mobsters saunter into a local pub, oblivious to the impending peril masterminded by the cunning criminal, Doirian. Alongside her brother, Curtis, and their accomplices, Harry and Ron, they execute a crafty plot involving a strategically placed bomb. However, the plot takes an unexpected turn when Doirian spots innocent schoolchildren near the danger zone and desperately alerts them to evacuate. Tragically, the bomb detonates, claiming the lives of both the mobsters and the innocent children. The quartet of Dwerin, Curtis, Ron, and Harry hastily retreat in their getaway vehicle, setting the stage for the unfolding narrative. The scene then transitions to Murphy, a seasoned gentleman proficient with a shotgun, engaging in a friendly contest with Vincent, the local constable. After emerging victorious, they discuss the escalating crime in their vicinity. Later that evening, Murphy enters a bustling pub, clutching a photograph with a circled individual, the renowned singer Bart, as announced by the pub's MC. As Bart captivates the crowd with his melodious voice, it becomes evident that Murphy's presence extends beyond mere leisure. Driving to a secluded location, Murphy reveals Bart, confined in the trunk of his car. With his shotgun, he instructs Bart to ascend a hillside and commence digging. The grim reality dawns on Bart as he realizes he's in a burial ground for Murphy's previous victims. In their final conversation, Bart divulges his troubled past but asserts his departure from it. Contemplating Bart's confession, Murphy makes a somber decision, abruptly terminating Bart's life and interring him in the unofficial cemetery, marked by a haunting tree. The chilling revelation that Murphy is a merciless contract killer, driven by financial gain, becomes startlingly apparent. He proceeds to his manager's residence, where he is warmly welcomed by Josie. She not only inquires about his meal preference, but also assures him of preparing it. The atmosphere shifts when Kevin, a new recruit, displays his impetuosity by snatching bread from Josie's basket, prompting Murphy to comment on the impetuousness of youth. In a meeting with Robert, Murphy discloses that he has completed his assigned task and observes Kevin departing. He seizes this opportunity to propose that all future assignments should be delegated to the younger man. Murphy, burdened with grief since his wife's demise, expresses a desire to abandon his criminal lifestyle and embark on a fresh journey. He reminisces about his late wife's aspirations for him to transform into a benevolent individual who aids and cares for others. This revelation takes Robert by surprise, who then inquires about Murphy's future plans. Murphy unveils an unanticipated ambition. He aspires to become a farmer and cultivate a garden. Robert, respecting Murphy's decision, hands him the remuneration for his final assignment and bids him farewell. The subsequent day, Murphy initiates his new life as a farmer preparing his land and purchasing a variety of seeds from the town. He also begins to form friendships, such as by dining with his amiable neighbor, Rita, where they discuss his late wife and their shared memories. During a neighborhood stroll, Murphy encounters Moya, a young girl fishing on a bridge. He assists her by offering his handkerchief to use with the fishing line. As they converse, he learns that Moya is attempting to catch a fish for her family's dinner. The situation turns melancholic when she accidentally drops her lunchbox into the water, revealing bruises on her neck. Attempting to conceal the truth, she flees, leaving Murphy pondering the girl's circumstances. Murphy then seeks out Moya's mother, Alara, who works as a bartender at a local bar. He commends her bartending abilities and informs her about the incident with Moya's lunchbox, taking accountability for distracting her daughter. Alara, appreciative of his honesty, accepts his explanation. Later that night, as he departs from the bar, Murphy encounters Moya again, who appears as though she might abscond. He assures her that he has already clarified the lunchbox incident to her mother, but Moya remains silent, and he walks away. To his astonishment, Moya decides to trail him. Upon reaching his house, Murphy senses that something is amiss. Curtis, his uncle implicated in the initial bomb plot, is waiting outside. It's evident that a significant event is on the horizon. The following morning, Murphy brings a basket of food to Moya and hands it to her mother, Alara. Concerned about the girl, he questions her about it, and she hands him a bullet but remains silent about her bruises. Curtis makes an appearance, causing Moya to rush inside. In an impolite manner, Curtis requests Alara for some food and insinuates that Murphy is up to no good, then departs with the provisions. Murphy inquires about Curtis's identity, and Alara reveals that they are related through marriage and that she wishes she could distance herself from him. Murphy presents Robert with the bullet he received from Moya and requests assistance in dealing with Curtis, citing the harm he's inflicted on the young girl. Robert hears about Curtis's threats but declines to assist. 
Under the ominous canopy of the looming showdown, Murphy's unwavering gaze fixates on Curtis, signaling an impending clash. As the day unfolds, fate intertwines their paths, leading to a perilous ride home offered by Murphy himself. Casual conversation takes a dark turn as Murphy delves into his sordid past, probing Curtis about his own affinity for firearms. The atmosphere thickens when Murphy unveils a hidden gun and claims possession of a unique collection of rare ammunition. As Curtis becomes engrossed in the revelations, Murphy cunningly steers the car towards a desolate forest, a premeditated plan to eliminate his unsuspecting companion. The tension crescendos when Curtis, seizing an opportunity, launches a frenzied knife attack. In a twist of fate, Murphy's firearm malfunctions, turning the tables perilously. The imminent danger is averted by the unexpected arrival of Kevin, who is informed by Robert to keep a watchful eye on Murphy. A web of intricate loyalties and hidden motives unravels further as they bury Curtis's lifeless body leaving behind a trail of secrecy. Seeking solace in a bar, Murphy and Kevin engage in conversation, exposing Kevin's admiration for Murphy's deadly proficiency. However, Murphy is incensed by Kevin's cavalier attitude towards the gravity of death, issuing a stern warning against trivializing such a serious matter. Meanwhile, two anxiety-ridden days pass without Curtis's appearance, prompting his concerned sister, Doirianne, to embark on a quest to unravel the mystery. Confronting Alara, Curtis's last known acquaintance, tempers flare, and Dorian's distress mounts upon discovering a missing bullet from Curtis's gun. Turning to her business contacts, she stumbles upon a lead pointing her to Robert, who feigns ignorance about Curtis's whereabouts. In a dramatic turn of events, Dorian stumbles upon the damning evidence in Robert's home, realizing the grim truth behind her brother's disappearance. Fueled by grief and fury, she confronts Robert, resulting in a fatal confrontation. Josie, Robert's wife, witnesses the grim scene forced into silence under Dwyer's threatening gunpoint. News of Robert's demise reaches Murphy and Kevin, who assure Josie that they will handle the aftermath. Unbeknownst to them, Dwyer, consumed by a thirst for revenge, rallies her allies to unearth the puppeteer behind Curtis's demise. As the specter of revenge looms, Murphy and Kevin, sensing the imminent threat, meticulously erase all traces of their nefarious past and future plans. Urged by the newfound danger, they instruct Josie to contact the authorities heightening the stakes of their clandestine activities. Simultaneously, Dwyerian's desperation intensifies, propelling her to resort to subterfuge. Enlisting the help of Harry, they orchestrate a ruse, with Harry posing as Murphy's nephew to extract information from a local shopkeeper. However, their covert mission takes an unexpected turn when Sheriff Vincent scrutinizes Harry's presence, casting doubt on his supposed familial ties to Murphy. Undeterred by the setback, Dwyerian and her team press on, reaching Murphy's residence. Inside, they uncover war photographs that unveil the grim chapters of Murphy's tumultuous past. Meanwhile, Murphy, sensing an ominous disturbance, urges Kevin to halt the car, prompting them to observe the unfolding events from a discreet distance. During this uneasy vigil, Kevin shares his own narrative, recounting how a barroom victory caught Robert's attention, leading to his entry into their perilous world. Murphy, in turn, reflects on his transformation from a war-hardened soldier to a remorseless killer after the death of his wife, detailing the pivotal role Robert played in shaping his current path. As dawn breaks, Dorian's frustration boils over, leading to a destructive outburst in Murphy's car. Kevin, agitated by the act, brandishes his weapon at Dorian, but Murphy intervenes, preventing a potentially catastrophic escalation. The skirmish catches the attention of Rita, who, in an unfortunate turn, receives a blow from Dwyerian after a contentious exchange. In a display of unexpected empathy, Murphy and Kevin rush to Rita's aid, carrying her inside her house and summoning medical assistance without revealing their identities. Meanwhile, at Kevin's residence, Murphy stumbles upon a burnt newspaper detailing the Belfast bombing, sparking an unrelenting curiosity that compels him to delve deeper into the shadows of his past. Murphy purchases the same newspaper from a local store, and discovers that Dorian, her brother, and their crew are the prime suspects in the bombing. He deduces the group's hideout, a place brimming with explosives. Subsequently, Murphy attends a grand football match that has drawn the entire town, including Dorian and her team. Ron stumbles upon their names and photographs in the paper, identified as bombing suspects, which sends them into a state of panic. Despite discussions of fleeing the country, Dorian is resolute in her quest for vengeance. Amid the pandemonium of the football game, Murphy locates Dwarian and trails her to the restroom. However, his fortune dwindles when Dwarian confronts him with a firearm, 
In a moment fraught with tension, Murphy denies murdering her brother but consents to reveal the actual perpetrator. She strikes a bargain with him. Deliver the real killer to the bar that night or brace for severe consequences. She threatens to detonate the entire establishment. As dusk descends, Murphy discloses to Kevin their plan to rendezvous with Dwarian at the bar. He confesses that he sees no alternative but to eliminate her. Kevin is exhilarated at the prospect of participating in such a mission. Upon their arrival at the bar, Kevin appears armed, but Murphy insists on utilizing his own equipment. Unexpectedly, Murphy bestows upon Kevin a substantial amount of money and advises him to commence a new life far from this violence. Kevin is moved and appreciative of Murphy's unforeseen generosity. Once inside the bar, Murphy engages in a conversation with Sheriff Vincent. When Vincent inquires about his occupation, Murphy provides an ambiguous response, implying that it's something the sheriff would prefer to remain ignorant of. He then spots Dorian and approaches her, while Ron, bearing a suspicious-looking bag, heads towards the bar. Outside, Vincent, taking a breather for a smoke, notices Harry in a car bearing scratch marks. Back inside, Vincent identifies Ron with the dubious bag. Simultaneously, Murphy proposes to Dorian that they converse outside, but she sternly warns him that she'll open fire if he attempts anything. Then, surprisingly, Kevin makes an appearance, feigning interest in Dorian. When she rejects him, he mentions her name, revealing that he's the one who murdered her brother and even boasting about it. The air in the bar crackles with tension as Dwarian, fueled by fury and vengeance, reacts instinctively to Kevin's callous confession. Without a moment's hesitation, she shoots him in the stomach, triggering a chaotic and deadly gunfight that sends patrons scrambling for cover. Outside, Sheriff Vincent discovers a bomb in Ron's bag, only to be confronted by Harry. Meanwhile, inside the bar, Kevin manages to retaliate, shooting Dwarian amidst the chaos. Murphy, quick to respond, fires at Ron diverting his attention to prevent a potential explosion. However, Murphy's intervention leads to a violent end for Harry as he attempts to set off the bomb. As Kevin lies dying, he implores Murphy to escape to California with the money. Before he can finish his plea, Dwarian, despite being shot, seizes a final opportunity for revenge and kills Kevin. Determined to confront her, Murphy faces interference from Ron, but in a ruthless act of vengeance, he eliminates Ron. With Dwarian leaving the bar, Murphy tails her, and the pursuit leads them to a church. There, amidst the solemn surroundings, she confesses the weight of their collective sins and seeks a simple gunshot death as a form of atonement. Reluctantly, Murphy agrees, recognizing the shared culpability that binds them. However, before he can act, Dwarin succumbs to her injuries, leaving Murphy to grapple with the aftermath. Assuming the solemn responsibility of burying her in the woods, Murphy marks her resting place with a tree a poignant reminder of the consequences of their choices. Seeking closure, Murphy visits Rita to apologize for keeping his troubled history shrouded in secrecy. Rita, understanding and sympathetic, assures him that explanations are unnecessary. Expressing gratitude, Murphy sets out on a journey to forge a new path in life, 